little bit nervous. <laughs> okay, well, welcome everybody. On a sad note, but as as you know and I know, she was suffering a lot, and, and uh, in some ways, she's relieved of all of that. And is I don't know. I think are we are we? I I've lost the count, but are there more there than there are here? Yeah. <laughs> so, so there you are. So in any way, we we begin by asking God to be in our in our midst. A God who is so much part of your life, part of your family, always, always throughout the whole history. Uh, there are the good times and the bad, and uh, so we remember them all, and especially today, we remember Pat. And she was the she was always the youngest. Eh? She was always that that, that uh, one who seemed to didn't fit. You know, <laughs> but, but, but there she was, and and we loved her dearly, and. Uh, and so did all the, the clan. And, uh, and then when these guys came along, Luann, hi Luann, okay, we want to forget Luann over there. Um, that was such a joy. And I, I think I was living with Father, Father Chris then, and my goodness, you'd think that it was, the, it was uh, someone of the royalty that was born, you see. <laughs> anyway, you know how much he loved you. And, uh, so we remember all of that, Lord, and we, we place it before you, and you, we ask you to help us to, to remain people of faith, and people who treasure the gift that, uh, that will live forever, to treasure the fulfillment of that gift and the kingdom that you prepared for us, the kingdom enjoyed by all so many of our friends and, and, and others, too, who, who have gone before us, and, and uh, that we one day will, will see as well in our own persons. And so we begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of love, who gave us Jesus, the light of the world, be with you now and always. Amen. God of all consolation, open our hearts to your word, so that listening to it we may comfort, comfort one another, finding light in time of darkness, and faith in time of doubt, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, and we're going to be hearing a lot about uh, light and darkness. And, and your your mom was such a, a bright light uh, in any context in which we were together, and in your especially with your own your own lives and the family. And so let us remember her as that beautiful a light that shone uh, in your midst. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. And so that whole reading from Isaiah speaks of the context is the, the troubles that Israel was having and then finally being lifted from that and, uh, and rescued. And, and uh, so the words of Isaiah, great words of hope, but they spring from a moment of great darkness. And so we too always have to not be afraid of the darkness because it's in the darkness that, that that light shines even brighter and, and consoles us and encourages us and uh, gives us a desire to live even more fully the life that, that Pat gave us and gave you. The Lord is my light and my salvation. If you guys could repeat that. The Lord is my light and my salvation. 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Your face, O Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, he too is going to talk about the darkness and the, the light that we treasure. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it is said, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Maybe we could stand for the gospel. The Lord be with you. And with you, The reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus cried aloud, Whoever believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in the darkness. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Jesus Christ. Can you be seated? I think I'll, I'll, I'll begin with the, the eulogy that uh, Luann prepared, but because of uh, her uh, sickness here right now, we're going to read it for her. Okay. Eulogy for Patricia Quinlan, her mom. Born in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in 1943, Patricia was the first child of two for Anne and Charles, or Charlie, as they called him, to Rogier. The family moved to Forest, Ontario, where her father was stationed at the nearby Camp Ipperwash military base, where he served as a cook. It was probably because of her father's cooking that Patricia often said, tasty, when she ate something that was, well, Tasty. The Derogiers moved to Windsor and built a small, cozy two bedroom house in the 1950s on the corner of Grand Mare Road West and California Street in South Windsor, where Patricia grew up. She attended the then brand new Massey Secondary School, and after transferring from Patterson Collegiate downtown, at Massey, she served on committees, clubs, and teams, including the yearbook committee as the editor, the athletic association, swimming team. She was in the first graduating class, and her graduation photograph still hangs proudly in the hallway at Massey. A few days before Patricia passed away, I stumbled upon a box of eight millimeter films in her basement. Oddly enough, I had purchased a 70-year-old film projector on a whim a few weeks earlier, even though I had no idea if it worked, and never having owned any 8mm film. I crossed my fingers as I loaded the first reel of film, and then, as if by magic, images appeared of the Derogiers and Quinlans 60 years in the past. 
There were house parties, backyard parties, vacations. Other events that people found worthy of filming with their Kodak cameras, which captured five minutes at a time, where the film had to be mailed out to be developed, and when it returned, it was likely that one or two of those precious five minutes were spoiled from under or over exposure. However, among the things that stood out for me as I watched mesmerized were Patricia's love of the young Paul Quinlan. and in later film footage, her love for her little children. Patricia married Paul in 1965 and enjoyed 44 years of marriage before Paul passed in 2010. Upon their marriage, Patricia moved from the city out to the farmlands of Maidstone and into their newly built house on the Quinlan farm. I would imagine this may have been a difficult move for a young woman uh, from the city who was accustomed to an endless supply of hot and cold water at the turn of a handle. Neighbors close by driving five minutes to a shopping center and just the general chatter of the city. But she seemed to fit in well and always called it home. Patricia worked as a laboratory technician in Windsor at Riverview Hospital, IODE and Metropolitan Hospital, where she spent many years helping people in the process of healing. Patricia is the mother to three children, Luann, Ed, and Pat. A grandmother to six children, Quinn and Amelia, Blake and Christy and Kayla and Jacob. And a great-grandmother to two great-grandchildren, Jackson and soon to be born, Benjamin. For her grandchildren, she was always there for birthdays, holidays, and special occasions. The grandchildren will remember the many ski trips to Blue Mountain, where Patricia hosted a special award night to celebrate their achievements on the hills. Personally, I was always amazed at how Patricia, who had probably learned to ski in her 20s, skied so skillfully while I, having learned to ski at roughly the same age, often made it at least partway down the hill with the ass over tea kettle technique. The only rational explanation that comes to my mind is that Patricia was tutored by Father Chris, who probably included a lifetime subscription of being watched over by an army of angels. <laughs> Patricia and Paul, I remembered, in the community for forming Maidstone Against Dumping, or MAD, to mount a fight against poor practices at a local landfill. Coincidentally, I later came to work as an engineer, hired by Pat and Paul at that time. And when I recently told him that Pat was ill, he said of her and Paul that the Maidstone Against Dumping group always has a special place in his heart it was my first interaction at a high level with clients, and they were so knowledgeable and reasonable in all my years of consulting. It is seldom that I have come across another group that has, or even had, such high standards and conviction. During the retirement, Pat, Pat, Patricia and Paul enjoyed spending time and traveling with friends and family. And after Paul's passing, Patricia spent much of her time volunteering at the Essex Food Bank and at St. Mary's Church, bowling, going to the matinee, hanging out with Aunt Ruth, okay, and feasting bi-weekly with Aunt Ruth and the Chatham Quinlans. Okay. There were also the power shopping excursions with other shopping volunteers like Luann, where mere novices like Amelia had trouble keeping up and often succumbed to exhaustion long before the end of the day. While I have many more memories of Patricia, what I remember most about her is not a thing or an act, but a quality. She was able to stay calm in the face of unfortunate and seemingly unsurmountable circumstances. I first really noticed this when her parents passed away. 
and throughout the years with life-altering events, like the diagnosis of her husband, and then again upon her own diagnosis. She always remained calm. Perhaps knowing that there was a greater power at work and putting your faith and trust in God. And so it is with that that we say not goodbye, but we love you. See you in the next life. Amen. Amen.
about giving her a hand, you guys, for that. It was, it was great, not only a, a great writer, but a director, a film director. It was really well done. Okay, I totally enjoyed that. Okay, and uh, in the final little little wave, okay, of, of Patricia. Am I supposed to say Patricia or Pat? I think I always call her Pat. You, you guys decide to distinguish from that guy, right? Is that the whole idea? Yeah, yeah well, okay. I'll call her Pat. Yeah. No. Beautiful lady. Hard to believe. Yeah. And then there was God. <laughs> then there was the God who who loves us and is all part of us and created all those lovely relationships and moments together and, and uh, that we cherish. And so we thank God for all those times together, all those memories that uh, enrich us. And then you just take all of that and you just pass it on to your kids. It's, it's pass it on time. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's what it is. And you. Uh, you say, here you are, kids, here's the way, uh, here's what we received and we pass it on to you. I hope you carry it well. So let's continue with our, our litany of saints, or not litany of saints, but just a litany, and I invite you to answer, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray, let us praise Jesus Christ who is light of the world and the life of believers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Great light to those who dwell in darkness, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. Saving light, overcoming the darkness of sin, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. Radiant light, giving life to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. Drawing light for the nations of the world, we pray to you, Lord. Lord hear us. Healing light, opening the eyes of the blind, we pray to you, Lord. Lord hear us. Joyful light at the harvest time of life, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Peaceful light for the saints in glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. I invite you to stand as we pray together and share a prayer that, that you might learn at the, at the knees of your mom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the, in the, um, that little room I was in, there's a, in my bag is my holy water. Someone want to go and retrieve it? It's just in the office there. Uh, yeah. Amen. Boy days. There you go. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> I don't have the bells, though, Father. No bells. We don't need bells. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we gather around Pat's coffin and we ask God to make these final prayers meaningful for all of us that we, we ask Him to, to take her to himself, treasure her until the day when we, we gather around and, and see her again. So before we go our separate ways, we take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again in the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. In baptism, Patricia Pat shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May she be welcomed now into the glory of eternal life. And as you know, it's my privilege to, to go and, and administer the sacraments to her on those couple of occasions. I finally learned how to get there. <laughs> okay, I'm a slow learner. <laughs> anyway, and uh, and found her as you did, just serene, calm, uh, collected, sad in some ways, 
but um, in control. And, and uh, the beautiful mom that you always knew. So that's the memory and that's the treasure. And into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend Pat in assurance, and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Pat in this world, that they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for all the, the times that you were there to support and, and comfort those who had lost loved ones. I remember the many, many funerals that I would attend, and there you were in line with that one and a bunch of others. <laughs> and uh, it was beautiful to see, and uh, you're always a treasure, and you'll always be remembered. God bless you until we see you again in paradise. So dear friends, may every mark of affection, every gesture of friendship that you give to each other be a sign of God's peace for you. In peace, we take our sister Pat to her place of rest. Yeah. We may be strong. Yeah. Yeah. Been there a few times. <laughs> We're just going to actually have you take a seat for just a moment. We're going to have one final song, so just so you can have a moment of reflection. Tell me in heaven as a garden Could you take
In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sister Pat has gone to her rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome her to the table of God's children in heaven with faith and hope in eternal life. Let us assist her with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our sister, and together may we who and, and together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. Because God has chosen to call our sister from this life to himself, we commit her body to the earth. <laughs> For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For he has risen the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise her up on the last day. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. And may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Almighty God bless you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So once again, our our prayers and the prayers of all those who love you are, are with you, and uh, they will keep the, you in, our, in their prayers. They can't be with you at this time, but you know they're there. And so uh, uh, you, were, you were good to so many, and, and uh, they'll be good to you. God bless you all.